believe that we know how do radio pulsars lose their rotational energy, we can estimate their magnetic field fields uh, in standard way, ex just extracting them from the um, spin down wall. Uh, to calculate B in such a way, we need to know pulsar period, pulsar period derivative, which are uh, easily to be determined. But also we need to know pulsar magnetic ability, the maximum magnetic uh, angle, the angle between the spin axis and the magnetic axis, uh, pulsar radius and moment of inertia, or pulsar mass and the equation of state. And this information is quite hard to be extracted from the observations. Uh, but it seems there are some tricks that can help us to solve this problem. Uh, first of all, it is convenient to deal with the logarithm uh, of the magnetic field. In that case, this formula can be rewritten as a sum of two terms. First of them is the classical, standard, uh, well-known and widely used magnetic dipole estimator of pulsar magnetic fields. And second one is the additional correction term, which absorbs the information about the real pulsar radius, moment of inertia, and magnetic angle. More precisely, it absorbs the information about how the pulsar radius, moment of inertia, and magnetic angle deviates from the classical values assumed in this formula. Of course, we are unable to calculate this correction term for, a, for an individual pulsar. But what we are able to do, uh, we can constrain the distribution, uh, distributions of the magnetic angles, masses uh, of radio pulsars over all pulsar population, we can impose some reasonable constraints uh, to the equation of state of radio pulsars. And finally, we can calculate the distribution of this correction, adopting some equation of state, and hence can, uh, calculate the distribution of the magnetic fields for an individual pulsar, just assuming that the distribution of this delta B is universal and is the, uh, the same for every pulsar. So this is the idea, to use this correction not in a deterministic way, but uh, in a statistical one. Uh, to calculate this distribution, we need a couple of uh, initial distributions. First of all, it's the distribution for the magnetic angles there. Um, many uh, methods to reconstruct the distribution. We have adopted the data uh, derived by Rankin and parameterized by parameterization by Zhang. But also we have checked out uh, the more conservative uh, assumption about isotropic uh, inclination angle, isotropic obliquities for radio pulsars. And as you will see a few minutes later, the particular choice of the distribution of magnetic angles affects weakly to the final result to the final distribution of delta B. Uh, and this is what we uh, actually expect uh, to see because uh, pulsar spin down luminosity, as we think, uh, d depends weakly on the magnetic obliquity. Uh, masses of the isolated pulsars are unknown at all from the observation. But there are a number of binary systems with neutron stars, uh, which, as we believe, uh, suffered very sh quite short or weak accretion epizon. So neutron stars within these systems, uh, uh, as we see, has uh, masses that are close to the birth one, uh, birth, their birth values. And this distribution probably can be used for constraining the masses of the isolated pulsars. We have used the distributions obtained in this work by Ozo and Freire. This distribution is from the Bayesian analysis of uh, I think 80 or 20 binary systems. And finally, the equation of state. Uh, there are many propositions, reasonable propositions about the equation of state of isolated neutron stars, and we have compiled a list of 22 of them, uh, which we consider the list, we consider to be more or less representative one, because we have included to this list the equation of state that were constructed by means uh, all basic theoretical approaches which the theorists use to constrain the equation of state. So uh, here are the radius to mass relationship, uh, moments of inertia of neutron stars are simply proportional to the mass, and these curves are the delta B, it's a correction, logarithmic correction to the magnetic field, calculated for an aligned rotator, uh, 
uh, it means uh, for the magnetic inclination equal to 90 degrees. And you see that within the most probable interval of masses of radio pulsars, uh, this correction is equal to minus 0.5 dex. It means that classical magnetic dipole estimator systematically underestimate magnetic fields up to half order, orders of magnitude. So we have calculated distribution of delta B correction, the additional correction for all these equation of state. Here they are. Uh, uh, these distributions are close to, every of these distributions are close, is close to Gaussian one, with the averages spans from point fi minus 0.55 to uh, minus 0.25 dex. And every of these distributions have quite a small width, uh, less than 0.1 dex. Uh, it's very important. And in general, if you do not, don't want to deal with the choice of the, your favorite equation of state, you're able to average all this distribution to um, make a mixture uh, probability density function, simply assuming that uh, all equations of state you have in the OIS have has the same chances to be realized in nature. And then you can uh, get the generalized distribution. It's for anisotropic obliquities and for isotropic obliquities. For anisotropic obliquities, it's here. It's a uh, average value uh, of the correction and its width of this distribution, or in a linear form, uh, if you have, if you want to uh, get unbiased value of the magnetic field, you have to multiply classical magnetic dipole estimator to the factor approximately equal to three sevenths. Uh, what is important is that this correction is appeared to be statistically independent on the uh, magnetic, magnetic dipole estimator. Uh, I will not uh, tell you about the details, uh, how to, you can explain it. Uh, please see our paper. Uh, but it can be shown uh, also with some simple uh, simulation of uh, pulse evolution, pulse magnetic angle evolutions, and indeed we see that there are no any correlations, even if we assume an uh, exact correlation between initial magnetic angles and uh, initial periods of radio pulsars. And if so, then we can uh, assume that we can consider the width of the delta B distribution as a formal uncertainty of the, uh, our estimation of magnetic field. So this is what we want to make a statistical analysis. Another, com another component of the statistical analysis is the pulsar ages. We have compiled a list of 76 pulsars with independently known ages. Uh, for the youngest of them, we have adopted ages of the supernova remnants associated to these pulsars. Uh, this is the list that uh, uh, was taken mostly from these two papers. And another 54 pulses has the estimations of so-called kinematic ages. Uh, the kinematic age is the time which pulsar uh, needed to achieve its current galactic position uh, when it's traveling from the galactic disk. You know, pulsars are believed to be born within the galactic disk. They obtain a high, huge kick and then escape away from the galactic disk. Uh, and there are, in some sense, two types of kinematic ages. The well-constrained kinematic ages for younger pulsars, which, uh, for which a posterior distribution of the kinematic age is quite narrow and can be approximated by two-sided asymmetric Gaussian, and uh, high-aged high uh, pulsars, for which we can say that uh, they have intersect the galactic plane just once for their lifetime. The posterior distribution for their kinematic ages are very wide, uh, has a multi peaks, very complex. Uh, we simply approximate them, assume for them uh, a uniform distribution, very wide uniform distribution of their real ages. Uh, this is our pulsar subset, 76 pulsars are reported on the classical PP dot diagram. Small dots are the normal uh, rotation power of pulsars. Uh, you see that our subset represents this diagram, I think, uh, quite good, except uh, the most aged pulsars and pulsars with high magnetic fields. And this is the main, uh, our main uh, numerical result. This is the plot, the correlation between the magnetic fields over ages of our 76 pulsars. The error bars uh, along the B-axis uh, is def are defined by the distribution of delta B correction, and error bars along the T-axis 
are defined by the distribution of the kinematic edges and edges of the supernova remnants uh, we got in our analysis. To check the significance of this slope, it just can be seen by eye. To check the significance, we, we fit it by a simple model, which has only three parameters, the initial magnetic field, the age of the turning point, and the main parameter we focused on is the slope, asymptotic, asymptotic slope of this trend. Uh, and what is important that uh, if we assume some equation of state, uh, the assumption about the specific equation of state cannot actually change the slope of this cloud. It can only introduce a um, shift, constant shift, which is common for all pulsars uh, along the uh, B-axis. So, to be concrete, uh, we adopted here the equation of state BSK21, but it, was, it, it would be another one equation of state. Uh, this is the result of the feed, and this is the posterior distribution for the uh, slow beta, and you see that it is far from zero quite significantly. It equals to 0.5, it means that apparent magnetic fields decays radio pulsar, for radio pulses, the case, uh, so as BAT proportion scales as T to minus one-fifths. It's a quite gentle decay. It's not quite very steep, uh, but it's uh, quite significant. Uh, what, uh, what it can tell us about the intrinsic magnetic field evolution? Uh, we haven't taken the population synthesis of radio pulsars. Uh, we started from the, I think it's a classical work by Fushigi Gyoran Kaspi, uh, we adopt the, their uh, best model of pulsar evolution, uh, including the death line equation, but also we made some extension to their uh, population synthesis. Uh, we, modeling di we directly model uh, the probability for the observer to observe the pulsar. Uh, we uh, model the magnetic field evolution and we include the magnetic field decay to the spin down law. And also we have probed uh, the death line, which is dependent on the magnetic inclination angle. I think Vasily Semenich can explain you better than me why this is uh, better than this model. I will skip some details of the uh, simulation, but uh, what I only want to highlight is that the two basic um, to make a contribution in the um, uh, selection effects, as we found it, are the death line. This is the simulated pulsars for zero uh, beta for no magnetic field decay. Uh, it's uh, con density counterparts for the pulsars which uh, pass the observational selection, instrumental selection. So the two basic contributions to the effects of observational selections are the death line, which naturally cuts the cloud of pulsars from the top, and the dependence of the pulsar radio luminosity from the period and period derivative. Uh, I can explain it later, probably. And this, yeah. and this is the another numerical result. Uh, we have um, we made population synthesis assuming various uh, values, a set of values of intrinsic slope beta zero, and calculated the simulated slope which we uh, try to um, ex explain uh, from our observations. Uh, so this is the observed uh, slope, the observed pre-pastoral distribution, and this is the reconstructed intrinsic slope, the pastoral distribution for the intrinsic slope for alpha independent death line and alpha dependent death line. So what we have here is that these distributions are quite wide and mostly shifted to the negative side. The negative values of beta means that the magnetic fields are growth, not decay, but growth. This result look, uh, looks somewhat confusing, actually, but it can be understood since uh, the width of this distribution uh, is likely to be the statistical result from the high uncertainty, uncertainties um, in uh, now estimations of uh, uh, pulsar ages and some uncertainties in the population synthesis technique. Uh, but in general, we understand that observation selection is likely to can, on, um, can make the um, magnetic field evolution, apparent magnetic field evolution, steeper than uh, the intrinsic one. 
And hence, uh, within our models, we can say that uh, our observed uh, slope one fifths minus one fifths rejects the uh, theory models of magnetic field evolution, which are very steep at the end of pulsar life. Here we overplot the uh, magnetic field evolution, which is uh, barely admissible by our results on the theoretical curves, uh, which we can be provided by their authors. We are uh, very grateful to them. And you see that the magnetic fields that decay is not so rapidly, mostly because uh, a low amount of impurities within the neutron star crust fits our results much better than uh, the uh, curves that uh, assume a higher amount of impurities within neutron star crust. Uh, and finally, as I already said, uh, the growth of the magnetic field seems quite confusing. Uh, and my personal view is uh, that it is unlikely to be the case, but uh, if one thinks that it could be real, uh, then uh, I would like to know that grow growth of the magnetic field is not an exact exotic process, actually. We know at least one process in co central contact objects where the magnetic field being buried under the fallback material from the supernova explosion is really growing, it's emerging uh, from the very low values to the initial one. Uh, can the probable growth of magnetic field we found in our analysis uh, be, the re be the result, be the tail? Can we find the tail, see, see the tail of this process is uh, completely unclear. Uh, and this is my conclusion. Uh, it seems that timing-based magnetic fields, the magnetic fields of radio pulses can be constrained from the, its, their timing uh, with uh, their uncertainty, with, which uh, is less than 15 or 30 percent. Uh, the magnetic field estimator, magnetic dipole field estimator, which is, is uh, well uh, used, is quite good, but it is biased. So if you want to calculate the unbiased magnetic field, you have to think about the equation of state, you have to choose your favorite equation of state, or at least use the factor of about three sevens, which I think is a good choice. Uh, the basic physical uh, conclusion of our work is that the apparent trend, which is quite gentle, apparent trend in magnetic fields, is quite gentle and uh, allow only the uh, field decay models that assume a low amount of impurities in the neutral star crust. And another conclusion, which is uh, somewhat confusing, is that uh, we cannot formally reject the moderate growth of the magnetic fields. Moderate growth, I mean, it's a Tens percent on the time scales of a few million years. So, this is all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Time for questions. Dick. Yes, so uh, interesting analysis. I have to admit, I didn't fully follow uh, what you were doing. But there's good evidence that. Um, Neutron stars are born with a wide range of magnetic fields. Yeah. Um, so, does your analysis uh, take that into account in some way? Uh, no, we think, well, no, no. Uh, within this analysis, we assume that the magnetic field for uh, neutron stars decays with, under their universal law uh, independently on the initial magnetic field. So, uh, if I understood correctly, you used uh, a normal distribution for the neutron star masses. Yeah. yeah. But there was this paper from last year, I think, from Antoniadis that showed that the masses of the neutron stars might have a bimodal distribution yeah. With, yeah. with one picked at 1.8. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is due to they suggest that this is not due to accretion, but it's the birth uh, rate uh, of these neutron star masses that are, is picked around 1.8. So mm -hmm. how much would that affect the conclusions? So, uh, if I understood correctly those paper you mentioned, um, they have analyzed the uh, di uh, different types of uh, binary system containing neutron stars. Uh, this distribution uh, uh, have been constrained uh, only after analysis of 
20 binary system which contains neutron stars without equation that uh, were not suffered any equation. And, and the peak uh, at 1.8 masses, uh, as I understood, it can be from the equated matter. It can uh, fingers uh, to the equation in this system. So it's a, a different types of uh, binary systems. It uh, can be used in, our, in this analysis. With the binary systems which masses, uh, where neutron stars has masses which are close to the initial one. You may have said this, and maybe I missed, but there is this neutron star with a breaking index that is claimed to be explained by field growth. Uh, uh, is that yeah. ruled out? I mean, you say you allow a moderate field growth. Mm -hmm. uh, so that one, I forget the code of that pulsar. It's uh, supposed to be, I mean, people make models with uh, fallback accretion, then uh, mm -hmm. the field pops back out, etc. Is that allowed? Uh, I, I think yes, but I'm not sure how big breaking indices can be explained by such a field growth. And in any case, there are a lot of pulsars with negative breaking indexes, uh, which I think cannot be explained by this effect. No more questions. Then let's thank all the speakers of this session.